Hey everybody! Today I'm going to teach you how to do this nifty little lighting um, technique on just about any texture you want. So for walls or floors or whatnot, this is kind of an awesome little tutorial. In addition to Photoshop, you guys are going to need a couple other programs. You're going to need an IES generator and you're going to need a plugin for this guy. So the IES generator I like to use can be downloaded there. So go grab that guy, put me on pause. And then the other one is a great little plugin called AlphaWorks from Cybea. And um, great little website there too. Tons of plugins and good stuff. So hit up that one and go grab AlphaWorks and um, put me on pause. I'll be here when you get back. So to start, I'm just going to start with a new project. And I'm just going to do our default 512 by 512. And I'm just going to bucket fill this. You can use any pattern you're going to, you know, you, you have for it. I'm just going to bucket fill this with this little dotted image. And you might be careful about some of these that you use. This one kind of has like an element of light and dark to it already. So it may not be the best depending on where you're going to put your light. Um, I'm going to find one that's a little bit flatter. Let's use this guy. Okay. So we have this um, wall texture, let's say. And the first thing you're going to need to do is add a lighting element to it. Um, it can be anything, a sconce, shape, whatever you guys have that you want to use. I'm going to just use a mid-tone and I'm just going to, you know, make a lighting source on this. So it's mine's basic, but um, feel free to play and do something a little bit more exciting. I'm going to rasterize that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a layer and I am going to hit the D key on my keyboard and go to a black foreground and white background. And then I am going to grab a gradient and it's going to be a black foreground to transparent background. Or, yeah, gradient, sorry. And I'm going to go to a linear gradient and we're just going to pull down a line just like that. And it doesn't have to be perfectly straight on this guy. Well, it does if you're trying to make this a seamless texture. Just save yourself some headaches. But if I'm, since I'm not, I'm not going to worry about it. And also for the sake of time here. And I'm going to pull this down underneath it and just extend this down a little bit so we can see our shadow. There we go. And then you may play with the blending mode a little bit. I'm going to swap mine out to overlay um, and drop my opacity down a little. And then keeping it on my black here, pure black usually, it doesn't matter so much, but um, just for the sake of argument. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this layer and I'm going to hit the control I button and what that did, as I'll pull this up above, is it inverted the color for me. And I'm going to change my blending mode to normal so you guys can see what I'm doing here. Um, so now I have this gradient laying here. Oops. And I'm going to go to Edit, Transform, and I'm going to flip it vertically so it's pointing upwards. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink it down just a little so it's the size of my lighting element. And I'm going to change this blending mode back to Overlay. And there we have it. There is a nice little, um, a nice little glow and three dimension to that. So now what we need to do is we need to go to our IES generator. This is a fantastic little tool. Um, it is a little limited as far as exporting this goes because you can't, but I'll show you how to get around that. So basically just make adjustments to get the shape of light you want. And this is going to be the light projected out of your, um, out of your lighting element that you've put into your texture. So, you know, play with it until you get kind of what you want. You can also come down here and adjust the how far it goes, um, the brightness of it, and so on. So I'm going to up my brightness a little distance from the wall. So if you want it to look like it's right up against the wall, or if you want it to uh, look like it's pretty far away, it's very cool little texture. Okay, so we have that. I'm going to hit Control Print Screen to grab this guy and I'm going to start a new project over here. Hit Control V to drop this in here and I'm just going to use my um, crop tool to just take out what we need. And now this is where that very handy little AlphaWorks tool comes in. We're going to go to Filter and down here to Cybea and there's our filter. Um, what we're going to do is you have several options up here and you'll see they all kind of change. But what we what we wanted to do, it basically finds 
white pixels and black pixels and removes one of them. So your alpha channels. So we're going to go to black and white and we want the black out. And then you can adjust your range a little bit so to make it more dense or you know just how much black it's going to pull. And I can hit OK. And you can't see it now but when we get it moved over here we will. I'm just going to grab that and drop it in. And there you see our lighting element is here. Now we have a little bit of a problem down here because we have these square edges and that's going to cause an issue because light does, just doesn't stop like that. So to fix that I'm going to get my eraser tool and I'm going to get a very soft eraser tool. Oops, come on. It's going to be a pretty big guy and just kind of clean it up just like that. There we go. Now we have a nice soft edge. Pull this down behind your lighting element and your shadow and I'm going to adjust the size of this guy because it's pretty pretty big. I'm going to pull it down here a little more. Okay, and I'm going to change this to overlay. And now you see we've got light casting down from our lighting element. How wonderful is that? I'm going to duplicate this one more time. And I think, you know, and I'm going to drop the opacity of this top layer down a little bit until we get something that we like. There we go. I'm going to duplicate this and slide it over here to make two of them. Oops, grabbed the wrong layers. There we go. And then what I'm going to do, we're not quite done yet because light usually in a lighting sconce comes out the top a little bit and primarily the bottom, but you do have a little bit of light reflecting upwards. So to give us a little bit of realism, I'm going to add a layer here and I'm going to go from white to black now and grab my gradient tool again, foreground to transparent and get a radial and I'm going to just pull in a little radial like that. And I'm going to scoot this guy up here. And you'll see it's just way too big at the top, right? So let's shrink this down a little. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my warp tools out. Transform, warp. And I'm going to just pull this all in to this point. Everything except for the very top. And this is going to give you a wonderful little projection of light, as you see. Just like that. I'm going to make it a little skinnier and I'm going to pull it down just a hair. Make us all lined up. Okay, perfect. And then we're going to go with overlay and there it is. There's a little bit, oops, there's a bit, little bit of light coming out for us. Now, because you can see that I've got a little bit of brightness down here at the bottom, if you just grab your um, marquee tool and just delete that guy you'll clean up that area just fine. So you can duplicate this if you want it a little bit brighter like that. And I'm going to duplicate both of those and drag it over here, line it up, and there is in essence um, your lighting texture. So you know depending on what shape of light you have you can create the right glow and cast and you can even you know match up the floors and whatnot if you're doing something three-dimensional or um, yeah so best of luck with this tutorial it's super easy as always if you have issues don't be afraid to email me or leave me a comment or message and don't be afraid to um, add to favorite me and um, subscribe to my channel because I'm back into making tutorials again I have a little bit more time so hope you guys all enjoy and thank you so much for watching